How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I thought I'd try something a little bit different for this tutorial. So different setup, different location, different lighting, different audio, different angle, bit of camera movement. Let's see how it goes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to archive a project in Premiere Pro when you're done working on an edit and you think, you know what, I'd like to free up a bit of hard drive space. So I'm going to move this over to an external hard drive somewhere as a cold archive. So you can still draw on it if you need to, but otherwise it's not there, it's not in the way. Let's jump into Premiere Pro. So in front of me, I've got last week's video, which was actually about this camera slider and how quiet it is. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of, I'm done with this now and I would like to archive it, but I'd like to keep the source footage. I'd like to keep the music. I'd like to keep the separate audio track that I recorded all together along with the branding and all of the elements that I may have used in there so that if I have it on a cold archive, cold storage, let's say an offline drive that isn't plugged in, that is just kept elsewhere, I can plug that drive in on a laptop, for example, different machine, start this project up and it will find all of the footage, all of the media that I used in this without me having to re-download anything, without me having to go off and try and find where that one file that went missing is. It essentially grabs everything, packages it up, puts it somewhere for you to forget about. Now there, there are a few different ways to archive a project, but I'm going to show you what my preferred method is. So first of all, I have my edit here. I only used one sequence, so that's pretty easy. I only need to archive the one sequence. What I am going to do before I do anything else though, is create a new bin and call it exports. Because I think it's quite handy to have the exports from a project in the project so that you can see them straight there in the project. You don't have to go searching elsewhere for that exported file. So I'm just gonna go along to my exports drive. I'm just gonna grab how quiet is this slider anyway, and I'm gonna dump that into my exports bin. And there we go, save the project. And now it's ready for archiving. It's really simple. You come up to file, come down to project manager which brings up this window. And as I mentioned, I only used one sequence in this edit, but for example, if this was a client project, I would probably have three, four, maybe even five rough cuts in there. I'd have a first cut. I might have several different export versions, uh, some with subtitles, some without subtitles, some with different language subtitles, all of that, all of those sequences, you want to make sure those are ticked so that the project will save those sequences in the package before it archives them. Otherwise, if they're not ticked, they're not going. But as I only use that one sequence, I'm only gonna tick that one sequence. The other ones, well, they're irrelevant, they're empty, don't want them. Next up, you have the resulting project part. And this bit, I'm, I'm feeling like it's a little bit outdated. I would never choose consolidate and transcode all files because to me, the files that it's going to transcode are going to be much bigger. And I don't really care about that because I would rather work with a proxy workflow than transcode all of my footage to a DNX HR format. Um, it, it just seems like it's a more up-to-date way of doing things. If you don't know how to use proxies, make sure to check out this tutorial. It will tell you everything you need to know about working with proxies. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna collect all of my files, which is all of my source files. So the Sony files straight off the camera that I dumped onto a hard drive, as well as the audio files. So from my external recorder there, any music files, any images, any graphics, anything like that. It's gonna collect all of those individual files, no matter where they are. So they could be on a variety of drives, that's fine. It's gonna collect them all into one package and move them to a new location. Next up, you would set your destination path, so where you intend to actually move this project to. So for example, I will put it on my media two and I'll just put it in temp and I'll call it um, slider quiet, you call it what you want. There, put that in a new folder called slider quiet, done. Then you can come into your options here and fine tune what it is exactly you want to keep, what you want to do with your clips. So exclude unused clips. I wouldn't recommend doing this because I feel like if I'm archiving something, I want every single piece of content that I've filmed 
for this project to be included in case later on down the line I decide, actually, I remember I filmed that clip, I didn't end up using it, but I know it's there, I can go and fish that out for this other thing that it would be useful for. Whereas if you exclude unused clips and you've got, say, 20 B-roll shots and you only ended up using three, those other 17 B-roll shots are gonna be deleted forever because they won't be included in this and this is your cold archive. This is the archive you're relying on when you remove the other active drive, active drive, active project from your drives, if that makes sense. So I would avoid excluding unused clips, a little bit like avoid deleting raw photos, to be honest, just, just keep it all. Okay, then include audio conform files. Yes, include preview files. Yes, just because it's gonna help you when you load up the project, if you load up the project. Again, just help you because they'll already all be there. Rename media files to match clip names. You can do if you want, like if you've changed the clip names here to say like, well, this is camera A, this is camera B. Well, then that will change the actual file names of those clips to match that. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. I, I like to keep the original file names. And then finally, you can calculate how big your project is gonna be. So this is gonna be 20.45 gigabytes. And when you're ready, hit okay. And it's gonna copy all of the media. So it's not actually gonna move it, it's gonna copy it, which I like because I, I'm always a bit iffy about moving that amount of data. I'd rather copy it and then delete from the source than move everything. Because if your destination drive fails, well, you're kind of screwed then. And depending on the size of your project, this might be very quick. Depending on the speed of your drives, this might be very quick. Depending on the size, it might be really slow. You get my point. Um, it's just gonna take as long as it takes to actually transfer all of those source files across from one drive to another. Okay, so now if I navigate to that folder, okay, it's made its own folder, so you don't actually need to make a new folder for it to go into. It'll just put everything into a folder itself. And there you have all of the assets, every single item that I used in that video is copied there with all of the clips, with all of my graphics, all of my branding, all of the audio, and all of the video previews and audio previews. And then if you wanted to, you could compress it as a zip folder, as a RAR file, as a, what other compressions are there? there there's loads of archiving compressions just to try and squeeze down that total size a little bit and to make it one single file instead of a directory, like a folder with lots of files and lots of files within lots of folders. Uh, if you have it as one single file, it's just a little bit easier to move around, to transfer. And now it's safe for me to save this project and if I want to, to delete it from that drive. All right. That's it for me. I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments how you tend to archive your projects and if you plan to use this method instead, or if you have a better method to suggest for the viewers, then absolutely do that. I'm not saying that this is the best method. This is just the method that I use. So I'd be very curious to know if there is a better one. Let me know if you'd like to know how to do this for After Effects projects as well. There's a very similar process with After Effects, slightly different, but it follows the same kind of uh, line. So if you are interested in learning how to do this for After Effects projects, leave a comment below asking for that and I will put that on the list. All right, cheers. You know what to do, thumbs up, subscribe, bell, all of that. You've watched YouTube videos before. You know what the gig is. Catch you next time.